Okay, yeah. Um, my name is Christian Kübel. I'm software developer at Porsche Informatik. And um, yeah, I developed web apps since 1999. That means I've seen a lot, really a lot. Um, we started with Internet Explorer 4, I think, and we've seen a lot evolving, and now everything is better, a lot better. Um, uh, I work for Porsche Informatik in Salzburg. It's a, um, maybe not the best known company, but uh, it's uh, one of the biggest software development companies in, Aust in Austria. Um, we, uh, our products run in around 26 countries, and uh, uh, we have run 160 products, so we have quite a lot of product port portfolio. So you might say we already have microservices, but that's another topic. Um, we're around 450 people, 350 in development, so, um, and uh, our, our systems, there are about over 1 million vehicles sold per year, so during this talk, we will sell around 160 to 200 vehicles over our systems. And we do a lot of other stuff, so we have a lot of data and everything going through our systems. Um, we, we have our own data center in Salzburg and in Wels, and uh, we have around 1,500 hosts and 60 terabyte RAM and 1,500 terabyte disk. Uh, so we kind of big data-ish, and um, we are kind of moving into the cloud now, so maybe our data center will not exist in 10 years, but nowadays we still have it. So that's about Porsche Informatik, if you want to know. But the real question today is, why TypeScript? Chris, why do you say TypeScript is a good thing? Um, and I say, yeah, TypeScript is a good thing. And my main reason is this. It's the dot. Um, because when I press the dot on my keyboard, I want to see stuff that's actually right when I press the dot, OK? I'm a Java developer, and most of our guys are backend stuff, so Java developers, and they know when they press the dot and the, the IDE says that this is right, then this is right. And the problem is, oh, the problem is this, that, that the video isn't working. <laughs> oh, shit. Ah. Uh. Anyway, so we have to do some live coding now. <laughs> uh. No. Sorry. Um. And PM start. Here we go. Okay. That looks a lot better. So this is how Java developers feel when they first go to the web and develop JavaScript, OK? <laughs> they have the DOM, and then there, then there is no types, and everything is bad, and, and, and they, they struggle, and they struggle. And TypeScript is going to help them, because they come through it somehow. They still have the DOM, but at least they have types. Um, now you see what, what types brings you. Because when you play, flash the dot on, on the string, it's just the methods that are on the string, and not the, all the methods that are probably on any object or something. And when I create a number, there's the types of the number. So uh, there's the methods on the number. So that's, that is what a, the Java developer is used to. And I think that every developer should get used to that. Um, we do a lot of refactoring. Now we are selling Ducatis. And when we sell in Ducatis, we can't say car anymore, so we have to rename everything to vehicle. And when we say vehicle, uh, then we want, to, we want to be sure that our code base still works. And with JavaScript, that's not so easy. With TypeScript, we can have a safer refactoring there. Um, what, uh, what we use most is um, we have a backend application, and then we have Java code or whatever code, or we have just some Swagger definitions, and then we can create type definitions for TypeScript that we also can press the dot and see, for example, if we, have, we talk to the Twitter API, we press the dot and we see all the, the properties of the tweet. And uh, we, we, can, we can be sure to, to, to write right code to talk to the backend API. Um, and it's not us that uh, see TypeScript or any similar technology like Flow uh, coming up. Um, Slack just moved a lot of their, their, their client uh, code base to, to TypeScript 
because they say when the, when the code base gets larger, and you see we have a lot of projects and we have a lot of code, code base, then uh, when you do refactoring, or it's, it just breaks too easily. So people are getting more to the statically typed stuff again. And finally, with TypeScript, you can use um, future, um, future features of HTML script. We saw today um, the guy from Netflix who told us about all the cool stuff that's coming. And you can either use Babel or you can use TypeScript, because TypeScript is also uh, a, a cross-compiler or transpiler that creates uh, additional value. Um, for example, you can also use decorators and async await already in the browser. One might say ES6 brought the solution to everything. They brought classes. And I say, classes? Why classes? Where are the types? I create an object, and it's a class. It has fields, and then I can just put some other stuff on there and read stuff that's not there, and nobody complains, especially as nobody in the compile time complains. In runtime, it doesn't work. So that's kind of shit. I wanted to print this t-shirt, but I couldn't make it anymore. It, uh, so I, I have a cat here. Because I don't have any cat pictures in my talk, so here's a single cat picture here, if you want to. OK, so TypeScript. TypeScript to the rescue, or whatever. Um, ES5 is now common. Uh, we, we started to code with ES, I don't know. Nobody had an ES version there. I, we just coded JavaScript. Now we code ES5. ES5 is good. Um, who is using already ES6 in, in their projects? Oh, it's like yeah, 30%, I would say. Um, and who is already using ES2016, which is actually just one feature more? Okay. <laughs> and who's already using TypeScript? Oh, it's quite a lot. So uh, you can go now because um, I'm just motivating people to use TypeScript. Uh, anyway, um, TypeScript is a statically typed sub superset of uh, ES5, ES6, ES2016, and it will be a superset of ES2017. And it's developed by Anders Heisberg. It's quite interesting. It's the guy who invented or created Delphi, who still knows this is from the old days, and uh, who created C-sharp. So it's uh, a language designer who has done some stuff in the, in the past. Yeah, so um, now we, we look at TypeScript, and uh, we try to, to do some live coding here. Hope everything works. Yeah. So on the left, uh, you see a TypeScript file. And uh, I have the compiler configured to compile the stuff, and uh, uh, the, the result will be on the right side. So um, that you can see how TypeScript just changes the code without really changing it. So let's, let's start with a, a, a simple variable. And we, we call it hello or something um, with a typo, of obviously. And when I save it, uh, you see that actually nothing is, is different. Uh, only the const is gone because it's compiled to ES5 now. You can also configure TypeScript to compile to ES6. And when it's compiled to ES6, then the output is just would be const a hello. Okay? This uh, uStrict is a configuration. You can uh, configure TypeScript to put uStrict on every file, actually. So now we have a const a. And let's see what we can do. We can do a dot um, to lowercase. And we see, OK, there's a to lowercase method. And I can just use it, and I, I also see the documentation for it. Eh? That's really good. And um, yeah, that's it. So if I, if I put something in there, it's, it tells me it's wrong because two lowercase doesn't have any arguments. OK. So um, as you can see, I didn't specify any types yet, and it's still TypeScript. But um, let's start with some other stuff. Um, let's create another uh, constant. Let's uh, name it a, a again, and it's 1. And uh, then we create a constant b. And it's uh, 1 plus 2. And you can see in TypeScript that uh, b is, it's a is a number 2. So if you hover, TypeScript knows this b is a number because it's a, a, a plus operation. And plus operation doesn't change the type here. But uh, if I add a string to it, um, then uh, the b is a string because the concatenation of a string is a string. So TypeScript just knows a lot about JavaScript and helps you create stuff. Um, if, I, if I go here and tell types that this is a specific uh, type, then it will type fault and tell me string is not assignable to a number. 
because now I told TypeScript B should be a number. And so uh, I, I would assign a string, and it says no. It's not, no good idea to assign a string to a number. Yeah. You can do this with arrays. You can create an array. Oh, voila. And in the array, you can put stuff there, like one and two. And TypeScript knows that's an array of number, OK? Just because I added numbers. When I put in a string here, then TypeScript knows that it's an array of string or number, OK? And you see on the right-hand side, it's still just JavaScript, so no, no big deal here. Um, and if I push something now, um, I see um, here is a string or a number I can push. And uh, if I push a one, it works. If I push a string one, it works. But if I push any object, it doesn't work, because it tells me object is not assignable to string or a number. OK? So TypeScript does a lot to help you there. So if you have a list of people and you put something else in there by accident, uh, then TypeScript tells you to do in the compile time that it's, it helps in this way. OK. Uh, the next thing we can do is functions. And uh, let's create a, a, an add function. And we use the, the arrow syntax. So we have A, it's a number, and B, it's a number. And here is the only thing, or the only part where you'd have to tell TypeScript what type it is. Because when I create a function, TypeScript cannot say what the parameters will be. So you have to tell TypeScript, this is a number. And then I can say just A plus B and return it. And then I have uh, an add function. OK? Um, this, oh, no, I don't have an add function. I have to have the arrow. So now I have an add function. And on the right hand, you just see the ES5 thing. This, on the left hand side, this is actually just ES6, normal ES6, plus this number, number stuff. Number, number is TypeScript. And uh, then I can also use some, some new stuff like uh, the spread operator. And I can create a sum function that's just some items. Um, which are an array of number, and oh. and here I can say just uh, items dot, and I see okay items in the array, so it knows it has a reduce function, and even when I call the reduce function and I say okay let's start with zero, zero, and add the add, okay. And TypeScript tells me, oh, it's the other way around. Yeah, It's wrong. Uh, I to, the start value has to be the second parameter. And such typos, and I, I, uh, it helps you just by using the API, because usually you have to look up the API of the add function or of the reduce function or whatever. And here it just helps you creating this stuff. So far, so good? OK. The next thing we're going to do is interfaces. Because I, I already said I hate classes. I'm a Java developer and hate classes, and it's kind of funny. Um, next thing we do is interfaces. And interfaces are quite sexy, and they, they work very well. So you just create an interface person and say, OK, this is our first name, and it's a string. And this is a last name. And there's another string. And we could create some more feeds in there. Uh, you can also have so, something like the date of, uh, of birth, birth, which is a date. And uh, we can say that this is uh, an optional field. So this field has, can be undefined. And so I have to defi uh, defi define a new interface. Okay? And now I can use the interface, uh, for example, in just uh, creating me, because me, I'm Chris here. Yeah? Um, and I say Chris, and the first name of Chris is Chris, and the last name of Chris is Co or whatever, and uh, Chris is a person. TypeScript uses structural typing, aka duck typing. If it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it is a duck, because it, Chris now has all the properties that a person has, so I can use Chris in a function for a person. Yeah. When I, when I use function, 
uh, do whatever, and I pass in a person, um, and I return just the person's first name. Ooh, what's wrong you? Uh, I can't name a function too. Name, a, name, name it do a. Um, then I can just call the function do a and uh, pass in the Chris. And it will work because Chris is a, is, has all the properties that a person has. So structural subtyping uh, works quite easily. And you don't have to mess with all the stuff like in nominal typing in Java. Uh, is nominal typing. So if you have one class A and one class B and they have the same properties, they are two different classes. Uh, TypeScript usually just uses structural typing. So if you have class A and class B and they're they have the same properties, then they're the same because that's how JavaScript works, isn't it? JavaScript, when they have two objects, they have the same property and they're the same. Okay? So that's quite cool here. And you can also define like explicitly that this is a person. And when, I, when I'm here and I say just Chris dot, I can also see date of birth because it's also a property of the person now. Okay? So far, so good. Um, some more advanced stuff, you can uh, create union types. Uh, as we already saw, like what TypeScript was creating, I can just say, uh, create, define a variable and say, okay, that's just a string or it's a number or it's null. And then I can use the, the, the thing in, in some function. Or just keep it to number and null. And then we have a to lowercase function. And we pass in an A. Oh, no, this, that's just a. And uh, what you also can do is you can define types. So we have a type. And we call it, um, we call it a string or null. And uh, the type is string or null. And now we can have a function where you can pass in a string or null thing. And this is the null checking that the guy before said. TypeScript introduced the type checking with, type, with TypeScript, a null checking with TypeScript 2. So now we have it. And now it's quite the same as flow again. So in here, um, um, TypeScript now knows that A is either string or null, and so um, I, I have to do for null checking if I use a in some way. For, for example, if I do a to lowercase, then it doesn't work because it could be null too. So I have to first check a, uh, if a, for example, and then I can go in here and can say a to lowercase because a is now not null anymore, okay? So TypeScript will check this for you. So if you go, here and say return a to lowercase, then TypeScript might say this could be null. Okay, so can, you can uh, also have some reference error problems found and with this stuff. So far, so good. Oh, I have to get my, 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 my notes here. Okay, I think we, we, have, we have it got good covered here. So far, so good. Um, yeah, what, what you also can do with the types, you can de define types of functions. So you can type, define a by function, uh, which is a, a function of A, that's B is a number, and B, which is a number, and it goes over to a number. Let's save this for a moment. And uh, you can say, OK, this is a function that goes from two numbers to one number. And you can see on the right, there's nothing because we just define types and every, every type gets just elim eliminated by, by the compiler. So now we can, we could define our add function as a type of by function and add would automatically be a, a by function. Okay? So far so good. I hope this was a, some basic coverage of the functions of, of TypeScript. Um, yeah. Um, there are also some advanced topics uh, in the new versions of TypeScript, uh, which I will show you now. Um, one of the things is decorators. Decorators 
I think Decorators is uh, most of the, one of the most powerful features of the future ES versions. I don't know, it, uh, they're still not clear in which version it will go. It will go in ES 2018 or 2019, I don't know. Um, so it, you can use this in TypeScript already or with Babel in other languages. Uh, but you can use this in production because it gives you a lot of, like, a lot of power. Angular uses that, or React uses that stuff already for creating the components. Why shouldn't you use it? So decorators, uh, who, who, who is uh, developing Java as well? OK, that's a lot, like three quarters. Uh, they know it as annotations. And uh, in, in C Sharp, it's uh, called attributes. And they are uh, in square brackets in uh, C Sharp. So uh, these are just things that you annotate stuff with. And those things uh, get some additional stuff in there, like access control. You could say, no user, you can't call this function, because I do a user check before someone calls this function. Or uh, you could do validation, or you could logging, profiling, everything. You can do everything with, with, uh, with this stuff. Or you can create your frameworks with that. So for example, if you look at the measure decorator here, uh, here's the implementation of that. The measure decorator here does just measures how long this function call takes. Okay? So the decorator is just a function that's called with the function actually as a parameter. So the, uh, but we don't get the actual function. We get a definition of the function. In the target, we get the object the, uh, the method resides in. Uh, we get the property key of the method. And we get a descriptor of this function. So we can have a reference to it. And then we save just the original function as the descriptor value. The descriptor has all the stuff that property access has. Like you can, you can uh, seal for example, the property here, or do other stuff like ES6 introduced uh, in this. Uh, already, ES5 already had this with property seal and stuff like that. So um, then we create a new function where we just, yeah, we get the time. We call the original function with the right args and the right this, because always be aware of this in JavaScript. Always be aware of this. And then we just lock the, the result. So what this would do in your production code, it would just uh, record all your JavaScript codes and tell you how long they take. That's really powerful, especially when you're, uh, when you, when you're searching bugs in Node.js applications and, uh, and have to see how, how, how long does this take. Does anybody block my single thread? Yeah, could be. Um, another cool thing is async await, which is introduced in ES 2017, I guess, it, uh, was announced today. So uh, instead of using a lot of promises, 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 uh, you can just use an async function, which is async function. And then you can uh, just await stuff. And what will happen is there, it just resolves the promise at this point. And it const uh, constructs a promise chain and you can even do a try-catch on this. You don't have to have some fancy fair error handling. Just do try-catch. And the catch will be called when, uh, when, when uh, the promise is uh, rejected. So that's quite easy, and it's a lot easier to, to get with. And uh, with uh, TypeScript, you can also do already the async iterators. You can say async for what uh, the guy from Netflix showed today. Async for, and you have a, a list of promises. And then they get into the for uh, as, they, as they come in from the back end. So you can do a lot of stuff with that and uh, save a lot of code that is just senseless. Yeah. Um, TypeScript uh, uh, already supports this now for ES5 with uh, TypeScript 2.3. 2 yeah, similar tools. Flow, if you don't use TypeScript, please use Flow. <laughs> it's uh, s uh, similar awesome, and it's uh, now quite feature similar. Uh, they used to be very different, but now they got together again. Um, if you're a Java developer and you like to code in Java, use JSuite. JSuite is really crazy. They, they're using typings information from TypeScript to generate Java interfaces. Now you can code to the DOM or to any JavaScript object with Java, and then you can transpile it to TypeScript and then back to JavaScript. Really crazy. Um, or uh, if you have, want to have a look at a really real uh, uh, typed language, use Elm. Elm is real cool for the guys who love Haskell and stuff like that. So use Elm. And it's, at, at least you can try it. Um, Elm is a bit of a problem because it's a language and a framework and a runtime environment all in one. So 
if you want to have to separate, it's not very good. Yeah, summary. Static type checking is awesome. Please use it. It helps you save a lot of bugs. I always say my, my, the compiler is my first unit test. If the compiler passes, I'm, I'm already 10% or 20% sure it will run. Um, use ES2016 and ESNext features with Babel or TypeScript or whatever. Don't write like 200 lines of code for just handling promise chain stuff like that. So just use the new stuff and let somebody else transpile this to the complex stuff. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Oh, to the questions. Uh, we, we, we have our last T-shirt. And for the first good question, uh, I, I will throw the T-shirt. <laughs> Where is the first? Here's the first good question. Is it good enough? <laughs> I have you. Really good enough. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the, and the sample that you had with the string or no? Yeah. I was a bit confused because why would you have achieved the same result if you would just put the string question mark? Um, yeah. If you define a type, uh, it has to be uh, in this way, because uh, uh, there is no way like this or something like that. Okay. okay. And if if you have an interface, would you also get this uh, the error that you that you get when you don't put the handling for the null check? If you have an interface yeah. with a, a string yeah. question mark, you yeah, would you also get, get that. you get the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And you can uh, with this with this or types you can create enums. Uh, you can also do something like that. You can say uh, or one or a. <laughs> so one and a is also allowed now. <laughs> okay. It's quite crazy, but you, uh, with these union types, you can create uh, really, really good type checking stuff. And use union types, they're really good. Would we find any in your code base? Any? No, I, I guess. And how? Uh, <laughs> oh, no, maybe, yeah. I'm maybe a cast to any. Okay. I can't, I can't. And, uh, how are you dealing with legacy stuff? Are you oh. immediately writing, uh, uh, I don't know, interfaces or I don't know? Uh, yeah, legacy stuff is also quite a thing because, um, for example, I have here, a, 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 it's just some random jQuery plugin and uh, it's, it's in, in JavaScript. And you can quite easily start with now with, with the new TypeScript. You can put in a TS check in here and then you uh, TypeScript checks your JavaScript for type problems. OK, you don't have to. And you can uh, start using the stuff. And you already see there's a bug, because they, uh, they didn't put object here. So it should be object, lowercase. Huh? OK, so you find a lot of bugs here. Uh, the easiest way to, to change it is just rename the file to ts, and then start with any, and then remove any uh, one by one, actually. Yeah. And you can also ignore, like, uh, for, for, for some instance, you can ignore uh, for, for a while, like, errors in, in a single line and stuff like that. So, so you, uh, if you just start with a JavaScript code base and just put in uh, the checker for the first time, you find, like, 200 bucks. I'm sure. <laughs> You said that you use uh, Swagger to make sure that the backend code uh, conforms to the frontend code. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, is the Swagger contract the first thing you write, or is the Swagger contract derived from the backend yeah. implementation? No, usually we just generate it from the Java classes. So we have our Java classes as the interface, and we generate the Java from the Java classes. Uh, that are exposed via the API, uh, we cre uh, create the DTS files. But you can also use Swagger. Okay, so you, you create the, the, the TypeScript directly from the yeah. Java implementation. Yeah. There's a Maven uh, TypeScript generator plugin, and this, it's the same for C Sharp. There's a generator that gen generates C Sharp to TypeScript de the definitions. How do you handle na namespacing? Because I heard, heard that is a bit hard in, in TypeScript when you come from Java. Um, yeah, you, uh, when, you, when you're in the generator, you can define a namespace, and uh, you can use it with, uh, like, like in Java, then with a, like a package name. And uh, it's also all just pseudo, because it's just not really generated. Okay? Okay, thanks. Thanks.